the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 7. Now concerning the things whereof you wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman, nevertheless to avoid fornication. Let every man have his own wife, and let every woman have her own husband. Let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence, and likewise also the wife unto the husband. The wife has no power of her own body, but the husband, and likewise also the husband has no power of his own body, but the wife. Defraud you not one of the other, except it be with consent for a time, that you may give yourselves to fasting and prayer, and come together again, that Satan tempt you not for the inconsistency. But I speak this permission, and not of commandment. For I would that all men were even as I myself, but every man has his proper gift of God, one after this manner and another after that. I say therefore to the unmarried and widows, it is good for them if they abide even as I, but if they cannot contain them, marry, for it is better to marry than to burn. And unto the married I command, yet not I, but the Lord, let not the wife depart from her husband. But if she depart, let her remain unmarried or be reconciled to her husband, and let not the husband put away his wife. But I speak to the rest, I not the Lord, but to the rest speak I, not the Lord. If any brother has a wife that believes not, and she please to dwell with him, let him not put her away. And the woman which has a husband that believes not, and if he be pleased to dwell with her, let her not leave him. For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Else were your children unclean, but now they were holy. But if the unbelieving depart, let them depart. A brother or a sister is not under bondage in such cases, but God has called us to peace. For what knows thou, O wife, whether thou shalt save thy husband? Or how knowest thou a man, whether thou shalt save thy wife? But as God has distributed to every man, and the Lord has called every one, so let him walk, and so are ordained I in all churches. Is any man called being circumcised? Let him not become uncircumcised. Is any called in uncircumcision? Let him not be circumcised. Circumcision is nothing, and uncircumcision is nothing, but the keeping of the commandments of God. Let every man abide in the same calling wherein he was called. Art thou called being a servant? Care not for it, but if thou mayest be made free, use it rather. For he is that is called in the Lord, being a servant, is the Lord's freeman. Likewise also he that is called being free is Christ's servant. You are brought you are bought with a price, but not yet the, but not ye the servants of men. Brethren, let every man wherein he is called thereby therein abide with God. Now concerning virgins, I have no commandment of the Lord, yet I give my judgment as one that has obtained mercy of the Lord to be faithful. I suppose therefore that this is good for the present distress. I say that it is good for a man so to be. Art thou bound unto a wife? Seek not to be loosed. Art thou loosed from a wife? Seek not a wife. But, and if thou marry, thou hast not sinned. And if a virgin marry, she has not sinned. Nevertheless, such shall save trouble in flesh, but I spare you. But this I say, brethren, the time is short. It remains that both they that have wives be as though they had none. And they that wept as though they wept not, and they that rejoice as though they rejoice not, and they that buy as though they possess not, and they that use this world as not abusing it, for the fashion of this world passes away. But I would have you without carefulness, he that is unmarried cares for the things that belongs to the Lord, how he may please the Lord. But he that is married cares from the things that are of this world, how he may please his wife. There is a difference also in between wife and a virgin. The unmarried woman cares for the thing of the Lord, that she may be holy both in body and in spirit. 
But she that is married cares for the things of the world, how may she please her husband. And this I speak of you for your own profit, not that I may cast a snare upon you, but for that which is com comely, and that you may attend upon the Lord without distraction. But if any man think that he behave himself uncommonly to the, toward his virgin, if she pass the flower of her age, and she and need so require, let him do what he will, and he sins not, let them marry. Nevertheless, he that stands steadfast in his heart, having no necessity, but has power over his own will, and has so discreet his heart that he will keep his virgin, does well. So then, he that gives her in marriage does well, but he that give her not in marriage does better. The wife is bound by the law as long as her husband lives, but if her husband be dead, she is at the liberty to be married to whom she will, only in the Lord. But she is happier if she so abide, after my judgment, and after I think also that I have the Spirit of God. Chapter 8 Now as touching things offered unto idols, we know that we all have knowledge, knowledge puffed up, but charity edifieth. And if any man think that he knows anything, he knows nothing, yet as he ought to know. But if any man love God, the same is known of him. As concerning, therefore, as the eating of those things that are offered in sacrifice unto idols, we know that an idol is nothing in this world, and that there is none other God but one. For though there be there called gods, whether in heaven or on earth, as there be gods many and lords many, but to us there is but one God, the Father, of whom all things are, and we in him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom all things are, and we by him. Howbeit there is not in every man knowledge, for some with conscience of the idol unto the hour eat, as the thing offered unto the idol, as their conscience being weak is defiled. But meat commandeth us not to God, for neither if we eat are we the better, neither if we eat not are we the worst. But take heed, lest by any means this liberty of yours become a stumble block to them that are weak. For if any man see thee which has knowledge sit and meet in the idol's temple, shall not the conscience of him which is weak be embalmed to eat those things which are offered to the idols? And through the knowledge shall the weak brother perish for whom Christ died. But when you sin so against the brethren, and wound the weak conscience, you sin against Christ. Wherefore, if meat make any brother to offend, I will eat no flesh while the world standeth, lest I make my brother to offend. The good news of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. In your loving name we pray. Amen.